the name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So this morning, the clocks went forward. Of course, you all know that, otherwise you wouldn't be sitting here now. <laughs> and I hope it wasn't too much of a rush for you. Just be thankful that Benjamin Franklin's suggestion in 1794 never took off. He proposed that to save candles, Parisians should be roused from their slumbers an hour earlier by ringing church bells and firing cannons in the street. <laughs> In fact, daylight saving time wasn't introduced until the First World War, when the German army turned the clocks forward as a way of conserving energy. Other European governments followed suit shortly afterwards, including the UK. But it's not just about saving energy, important though that is. Another early campaigner for putting the clocks forward was one William Willett, a builder who also happens to be the great-great-grandfather of the Coldplay singer, Chris Martin. <laughs> Not relevant, but I thought you might like to know. <laughs> <laughs> um, he campaigned to change the clocks so that his golf wouldn't be interrupted by the sun going down. <laughs> British summertime brings the joy and anticipation of longer evenings and opportunities to be outside enjoying the warmer weather. Things are just easier in the light. On the face of it, this is what Jesus tells his disciples towards the beginning of the passage I have just read. Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. And Jesus is not just talking about physical light. This verse brings to mind his earlier words in chapter 8. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Following Jesus leads to a new life. In the chapter before this one, Jesus says, I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. Jesus does not promise an easy life. Staying with the golf analogy, you might still play bad shots and bunkers and ob other obstacles will still, still be there. But the difference when playing in the light is that you can see these obstacles for what they are. You can also see the hole. You know where you are heading and that even if it takes a while, you will get there in the end. Things are easier in the light. To understand better what Jesus is saying, we need to remind ourselves of the events at the end of Jesus' time on earth. Today marks the beginning of Passion Tide. Over the next two weeks, we remember the suffering of Jesus, the events which led up to his crucifixion, and the joy of the resurrection on Easter Day. The story of the raising of Lazarus mirrors some aspects of Jesus' passion, and looking more closely at this story can remind us of the enormity of what God has done for us. Firstly, Jesus acted in love. He knew and loved Lazarus. The message from the sisters tells us, he whom you love is ill. And it is commented on by the Jews who were watching Jesus as he wept. Out of love, Jesus went to the vicinity of Jerusalem, despite the threats against him. And God loves each and every one of us and knowing the risks, sent his son Jesus to die on a cross so that all might have eternal life. And Jesus acted with authority, raising Lazarus from the dead just as God resurrected Jesus on that first Easter day. We are left in no doubt that Jesus has authority over death. But Jesus' actions had a cost. Jesus is said to be disturbed in spirit as he approached the tomb. Perhaps he was aware of what was to follow. We know from the verses which follow today's reading that this event was the one which troubled the Jewish leaders so much that they hatched a plot to have Jesus killed. The cost of Jesus' passion was immeasurably greater. Not only did he suffer the torture of his trial and crucifixion, 
But he was separated from God for three days whilst he took on the sin of the whole world. And finally, the story brings new life. In the next chapter, Lazarus is seen fully alive, reclining with other guests at a dinner given in Jesus' honour. Jesus is alive today and his resurrection promises new and eternal life to all who follow him. Both accounts share themes of love, authority and cost, leading to new life. At this time of year, we are particularly reminded of new life as seeds start to sprout, birds return from their winter homes and insects emerge from their winter state. And today we have the added joy of welcoming Isabel into her new life in Christ as we celebrate her baptism and pray for her and her family, welcoming her into our community. So what might new life in Christ look like? In the Romans passage, Paul refers to it as life in the spirit. Rowan Williams in his book, Being Disciples, calls it staying alive in Christ. It's not about mystery or grand gestures, but simple challenges about the kind of humanity we are living out. He reminds us of the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. He suggests that when we start to think of the spiritual life as something difficult or complicated, we recite this list to remind ourselves of the everyday practical reality of staying alive in Christ. And staying alive in Christ means that we stay with him. This is not a life we can dip in and out of, turning up from time to time. It is a life built on relationship, sharing, watching and learning from Jesus, walking alongside him as he walks alongside us dwelling in him as he dwells in us. Paul tells us later in the letter to the Romans that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I don't think the weather forecast is very good for the rest of today. But if you are able to enjoy the extra daylight, whether that's on the golf course, in the garden, or just by leaving your curtains open a little bit longer, give thanks for the extra time of light and for new life in Christ, the light of the world. Not the promise of an easy life. For the golfers amongst you, I'm told Billy Graham is credited with saying, the only place my prayers are not answered is on the golf course. <laughs> but I'm sure he would agree that living in the light of Christ, whatever difficulties we face, we do so with the confidence that we are not alone, that we are loved, and that Christ, who has authority even over death, shares in our difficulties <coughs> with us. Amen.